Hey everyone, Geek Alchemy here today with a slightly different but still soapy video. Today we are doing an unmolding and a little something extra. First thing we're doing is unmolding our tester absinthe bars. Whew. I did not want to come out. All right, as you can see, there is some ash on top, which I deal with regularly. It is literally just something I have come to accept. Unless the ash is really bad, I don't even bother trying to stop it or change its look once it's out. But again, if it's bad, then I'll like spray rubbing alcohol on it something like that yeah. yeah somebody gave you this thing to have out at the house all right guys we're back had to have a little mini meeting so these bars are from bitter creek And we are about to unmold the bars from nature's garden. Now, as you can see, these bars went brown. So there is not only acceleration, but there is discoloration in these soaps. You might be able to counter it with zinc or titanium dioxide or a vanilla stabilizer. I do like Bitter Creek's vanilla stabilizer. And if this one gets chosen for the scent purposes, my testers like this better, then I will definitely be adding this definitely excuse me definitely be adding a vanilla stabilizer or a or zinc oxide to the batch the oh, the sides are a little soft but not as soft as the bitter creek but i think other soapers will agree this kind of happens uh hardness happens more when a batch accelerates. So just to show you some bottoms, same soap. Technically there was more colorant, more green colorant in this batch because I was doing a larger amount in green. So that lets you have an idea of the discoloration you will be working with if you use the nature's garden absinthe without any uh, adjustments. All right, so now I'm gonna set these to the side and we're going to start on molding our last soap of the day, sidearm. And as you can see, the top is very faded. I'm pretty sure this is just soda ash. We are getting into the higher humidity portion of the year again. Yeah, you can see the charcoal is definitely, and the, and the walnut hull is definitely darker than it appears on top. I find that the humidity down here really does affect my soda ash. It doesn't matter what I do to try and change it. It just literally ashes no matter what I do. Rubbing alcohol, covering it, not covering it, making it go through gel. I mean, these things can alter it a bit, but they do not necessarily stop it in its tracks. 
keep in mind if you have a different environment, you might be able to eliminate soda ash yourself. And yes, before anyone says anything, I this recipe is much lower in water than the recipes I started making soap with, and they ash just as much as those others. And this one even has harder oils. So, you know, you can throw out all the adjustments you want. I'm t chalking up my soda ash problem, which really isn't a problem because it doesn't affect the soap at all, to the high humidity in this section of the world, which is Florida, and it's usually very humid here 90% of the year. So I've, like I said, I've come to just accept the fact that I'm going to get soda ash no matter what I do. And tell me these bars don't look great. I love these. These are great. And you don't have to worry about the little guns falling off. They are secured in the soap itself. All right, now to the second part of our video. Actually, let's unmold this before we move on. Here's hoping it comes off cleanly. Eh, it did for the most part. All right. And as you can see, ash, no ash. And who knows, maybe it'll ash some more before it's done curing. There's almost no way to predict that. Maybe in the future, I'll go ahead and grab myself a dehydrator, or sorry, a dehumidifier, and test the waters out that way. Something fell down. All right, the second part of today's video is going to be infusion. We're going to be infusing organic turmeric powder and organic calendula petals in my organic sunflower oil. Why am I doing this? Well, one, for the benefits. You can look that up yourself. I'm not going to make any claims. You can decide whether or not it will survive saponification. Some people swear by these things. Some people say it's barely, if any, difference. So you be your own judge. You do your own research. I'm not making claims here. Today, tear that out, I'm going to be infusing these powders specifically for my gel savon and beldy soaps. Well, Gel savons are beldy type soaps. This will be used, the turmeric will be used in, this is impossible with gloves. There we go. The turmeric will be infused in the sunflower oil and specifically used in our crossroads soap. I'm going to be making that soap specifically for what, for my skin, for my skin type. Um, I don't wanna make any claims because again, some people you know swear by this, other people say it's a bunch of malarkey, but turmeric is supposed to be really good for anti-inflammatory properties which is helpful for people dealing with acne, like me. There we go. 
just over an ounce. I'm going to call that good. Turmeric also has other benefits. It does have vitamins and minerals in it that are beneficial to the skin. Again, I don't make any claims that these things survive saponification. Please do your own research and be your own judge of what is good for your skin and what is not. All right, just to make sure I don't, you don't have to see me keep jumping back and forth into frame, I'm gonna go ahead and pause you guys fill this up with oil and then I'll come back as I start to load up my calendula. See you in a second. All right guys, I'm back. Sorry about the movement here. All right, so we got 22 ounces of oil weight with one ounce of turmeric powder. And according to the line, I have roughly 700 milliliters or 24 ounce fluid in this jar. Next, going to be moving on to our calendula. Tear that out. Oh geez, it smells so pretty. Look at that flower, isn't it so pretty? These guys are great. I really do like the feel that calendula gives to soap. It's a really, it also imparts a really nice pale yellow I am nearly full on this container and I have just over half an ounce weight in here. These guys are practically weightless. I'm gonna try and get a full ounce in here before I stop trying to fill it up. Get this little guy in there. I don't know if you can see the uh, the weight, but these petals weigh almost nothing. We're nearly there, we're at 0.991 ounce. You may be asking me why I'm measuring this out so much. Why bother? Well, I like to have exact measurements. That way I know what I'm putting out there. That's a little twig. I don't want that. And you should always know, you know, what you're spending as a business owner. So that's why I'm trying to make this as accurate as possible. There we go. That's good. I need to find myself a different container than this big old bag. All right, so let's call that one ounce. All right, I'm gonna tear that out. I'm gonna start weighing my oil. Ten, eleven 
11 ounces going on 12. I'm gonna go ahead and let the air out because that's definitely gonna mess up the measurements. And I'm gonna pour me some more oil. I'll be right back, you guys. All right. Just doing this so I can top it off. 17.6. Let's get it at least to 18. Okay. I'm gonna wipe off my turmeric spoon so that we don't transfer anything over here. And I'm gonna try and get out any air bubbles and also try and maybe push it down a little farther. That way we can get more oil soaking up all this goodness. Oh, tell me that doesn't look so pretty in the jar. All right. Maybe we can get it up to, ooh, getting close to the top there. Maybe I should stop it at 18 and a half ounces. That's 19 and a half weighted ounces. You might be asking me why I'm trying to smash so much oil in here. You gotta remember that these botanicals will soak up the oil and I will lose that weight to an extent. So I'm trying to get as much in there as I can. And then these guys, in a very short amount of time will be going into my pot and I will be heat infusing them. What is a heat infusion? It's, uh, it's pretty much what it sounds like. A cold infusion would literally be just sitting these on the shelf and waiting for no less than a month up to three before I take these out and start using them shaking them up every day but I'm going to go ahead put them in one of my pots put a layer down so that the bottoms are protected and heat them for at least an hour not necessarily a rolling a rolling boil but I will be I will be infu hot infusing these for quite a bit so that I can work a little faster normally I prefer a short amount of time but well you're just gonna have to forgive me this time around I will see you guys at Newberry Farmers Market yes they just reopened and remember if you want to get in on the gel savon soaps test them out test out the beautiful little absinthe soaps. Tell us which one you prefer for upcoming Halloween release. Gotta let us know. Gotta sign up. It's literally free. Find it on geekalchemy.com and I'll see you at the Newberry Farmer's Market. Have a great day. Make it geeky. Bye.